2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Nation of people, as we as a 
nation of people needs saving. Brother T, do we need, do we need saving? Do we need saving? Okay, I, I can I can roll with that. You said we need direction. Okay. We need to come back to a nation by direction. What about you, sis? Do we need saving? All right, brother, get, take heed to that. Oh, you, you dropped the piece. You dropped the piece. Now, sister, don't leave. Do we as a nation of people need saving? You don't think so? Now, I'm reading saving. You said yes? Now, one thing in the Holy Bible, it talks about people being saved. We have to be saved from our sins, right? Let's get down Luke 168. Get down Luke 168. Because we gotta think to ourselves, what is it that we have to do to get ourselves back to prosperity? What we have to do to, uh, to be back into what we call a nation again? Let's get there, Luke 168. Luke chapter one, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Right, brother? God says he has visited and redeemed his people. Keep reading. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And has raised up a horn of salvation. That horn is Jesus Christ, a black man. Jesus Christ, a black man, is that horn of salvation. That's yes, right. As he speak by the mouth of his holy prophets, uh -huh. which have been since the world began, right. that we should be saved from our enemies. Now we should be saved from our enemies. Now we gotta ask ourselves, have we been saved from our enemies? Are we still in our enemies' land? Right. We gotta ask ourselves, right sis? I got a question. Us doing this political parties, us setting up political parties right. in our communities, is that what's gonna change the black man's mind? Is that what's gonna change broken families, political parties? Right. We gotta ask ourselves, is voting the answer, brothers? Why, why you say no? Why you say, why you say voting is not the answer? Why do you say voting is not the answer? We gotta go into this, because it's every year. Voting is every year, we have an election season, right brother? Is voting the answer? Is democracy the answer? Let's go into that. Give me lemon taste four, seven, six. Actually, give me Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. We gotta go into this. Election season is here. Is this what we're supposed to do as a nation of people? Are we voting today, brother? No. Why not? Why no voting, brother? Let's do that. Why you say that, brother? Why do you say that? All right, brother, but we gotta talk about that. We gotta go into that. The Bible talks about everything we can do as a nation to get our minds right. Let's get Isaiah 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. The Bible says because we despise this word, we don't like going into the Bible for our answers. Right, brother? Because voting season is here, brother. We gotta think about that. Keep reading. Because ye despise this word and trust in oppression. And because we trust in oppression. The Bible says that we trust in oppression. Keep reading. And perverseness. And, and stay the wrong. Because we trust in oppression and stay the wrong. So brother and sister right here, we going into something that a lot of us don't like to talk about. Politics. Election season is here. Are we supposed to be voting as a nation of people? Why not? President ain't going on class. I'm a vote. Because the presidents are not doing anything for us. Okay, what about you, brother? Stay right here, sis. What about you, brother? Should we be voting? Should we be participating in politics? Why? You say it's the right thing to do? What do you mean by it's the right thing to do? What do you mean? Okay, if we're not involved in any of it, that means what our problems don't mean anything, right? I, okay, I couldn't understand, I couldn't understand that. Now, one thing we do as the Israelites, we always go into the Holy Bible for our answers. We always go into that. So we're gonna go over it to Dan, Deuteronomy 17, verse 13, verse 15. Because we gotta think to ourselves, we've been voting for a long time. Right, sis? We've been voting for a long time. So the question becomes, is voting really the answer that we need? Right. Brother, is voting really the answer that we need? No. What do you think? Huh? You think so? I'm gonna go 
go to the Bible and show you what God said thinks about it, right? Bro, let's go to Deuteronomy 17, the 15th week. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set a king over thee. Now God says he's in favor of having people over us in rulership. He is in favor of that. Keep reading. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. But it has to be according to who he chooses. So God is not about what this political parties have been setting up. He's not about that. Read that part again. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. According to who God chooses. So how do you know if a man is sent from God? Because we gotta ask ourselves. People believe Barack Obama was the black Moses. People believe it. People believe it. People believe, it. People believe, it. People believe that Barack Obama was gonna part the Red Sea and set black people free. You wanna say what I'm saying, brother? So we gotta ask ourselves, are these people who are being put in political power truly for our benefit? You wanna say what I'm saying, brother? Are those people who are truly in political power truly for our benefit? You know what I'm saying, sis? Let's read that one more time. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. The Bible says set him king over him, over you. Keep reading. Whom the Lord thy God shall do. Whom the Lord thy God has you. So, brother, I have a question for you. The God, God says you have to have a man over you who he chooses. Why do you think that's important? Oh. I can't do that. It has been said. We mean it has been said. Uh, you need to, now, now, actually, when you're saying that, I understand what you mean. We're supposed to have people who are going to stand for our best interests. That's what the Bible is talking about. You need to have people who stand for your, your best interest. You need to have somebody who understands what you're going through. That's why when you read about the Bible, you will understand why Christ is so important. Right. And understanding how he truly looks like is so important. Because what we've been taught is, we've been taught our Christ that does not exist in the Bible. Let's get Revelation real quick. Because Christ, believe it or not, he was a political activist. Right. He changed the minds of the people. That's what he did. Because there were people who were going against what the Bible was saying. He had to straighten all that out. Because one thing that we're trying to straighten out is the lie that Christ came for everybody. That's a lie. Another lie is that Christ is a Caucasian man. That's a lie. So now if we understand that he doesn't look like that, how does he truly look? How does Christ look? Just said brown skin. Okay. What you say? You gonna go with that? Brown skin, what about you, brother? Brown skin, right? Now here, let's check this out. This country was founded on that image being Jesus. It was founded on that. So you gotta think to yourself, if that's founded on that, and the Bible says something different, we gotta start questioning a lot of things now. Let's get to Revelation 1. Let's go to Revelation 1 verse 1. Bring it out! Let's read it. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Read the it Bible out. says this is the revelation or the revealing of Jesus Christ. Keep reading. Which God gave unto him. Which God gave unto him. Keep reading. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Keep reading. Go to verse 14. Verse 14. All right, his hands and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible says Christ's hair was white and woolly, right? So yeah, woolly text your hair. Keep reading. Come over here, sis. We're going over some heavy stuff right now. Right. Keep as white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet like a divine grass. As if they burned in the furnace. So the Bible says Christ's feet was like a divine grass as if they burned in the furnace. Keep reading. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So the fact that it says that Christ's voice was as the sound of many waters, that means he commanded attention. Right. I know you got. I know you're doing your thing. But one thing we gotta do, we gotta address the lies. Right. We That's gotta right. Address the lies. Right. That's right. We gotta do it. Let's go back to Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. Get that one again. Right, sis. Because we're going over, sis. Right now, election season is here. Right, sisters. Election season is here, and soon we're about to be having a vote for a president. Right. So question comes: Is that something that we should be doing? Voting. Is that something that God wants for us to do, is to vote? He said the trick question? I think it's a choice. Oh, I think it's 
a trick question. I'm about to try to trick you, Jesus. I got no reason to trick you. Let's read Isaiah 30, man. Let's read that one more time. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because he despised this word. Now the Bible says that our people, we don't like hearing the word of God. Because the word of God comes with correction. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Sis, we going over some very heavy stuff right now. Stick around, keep reading. Because ye despise this word. The Bible says because we despise this word. Keep reading. And trust in oppression. And we trust in oppression. The Bible says that we trust in oppression. Now, question, sisters, where are you guys from? Where are you guys from? You're from the Virgin Islands? Okay, so they're from Caribbean, right? And what about you, sis? Same thing? The Virgin Islands? Okay. So what we going over in the Holy Bible, are we supposed to be getting involved in politics? Do you think God wants us to be involved in politics? God wants us to be involved in Yes. Why not? You said it's not of importance. Okay, what about you? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's fair. That is fair. You say you don't know. And that's fair. We're going to go into the Bible and we're going to show you if God ever wants to go into politics. First, let's start and told this. Go back to Deuteronomy 17. First, let's start this. Let's start there. Because one thing we gotta understand is, sisters, we have never truly had our nation back again. We have never been brought back to a nation of people again. Because like you were pointing out before, sis, we were in slavery. And through the process of slavery, we were all divided. People from the Virgin Islands, people in Jamaica, same people, same history, divided. You gotta think about it. Now we're gonna go into the Bible and I wanna show you something. Let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Now the Bible says we're supposed to have rulers over us. We're supposed to have rulership. Because behind rulership is order. We need order. I'm not knocking that. Keep reading. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. But according to what the Bible says, when we have rulership, it has to be established with what God says. There has to be criteria that God says has to be set, has to be checked off. What's that saying, sis? I know it's cold. I know. But bear with me. Bear with us. Let's read that again. Thou shalt in any wise set the king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Now, the Bible says God has to choose a king. God has to choose. Now, we got to think about this. When we go to the Bible, it shows you that Christ is a dark-skinned man. Why would that be important to you? Right. Okay, that, that's actually that's actually true. We are dark-skinned people. We are black. But the question now, okay, so now that we're black, right? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Let's actually go to Hebrews. Because the reason why I want to go to that in Hebrews is because Christ, a lot of us think that Christ was immaculately conceived. Is that true? Meaning that he was born of an angel, impregnated a woman, and came out. What do you, I'm, I'm not getting that. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, God created everything, right? Mm -hmm. It was necessary that he came that way. 
It was necessary that Christ was born as a man on earth. Why? Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. So that he could be a merciful and faithful high priest. Because if he was born of an angel, how would he know how to deal with you? How would he know how to deal with me? Right. You don't know temptation. You're an angel. You understand what I'm saying, sis? So that's the simplicity of Christ. We have not known. Get the uh, First Corinthians 11. Those are those basic simplicities that we haven't really took the time to understand. Because if he, you understand what I'm saying, sis? Because if, if he wasn't born of a, of a man and a woman, he wouldn't know the problems that we go through. In 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry about that. 2 Corinthians 11, I apologize. 2 Corinthians, so we're going over, brothers and sisters. We're going over the importance of knowing who Christ right. is. Yes, we yes, are, yes. We are trying to show you, brother, right there. Yep. We are going to, under, we're, we're going to show you the importance of knowing who Christ was. Who he was and why he walked on earth, right? So let's read that. Let's get 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Because we've been taught another Jesus. What's your name, brother? Jeremiah. Huh? Jeremiah. 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 I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Jeremiah. All right. What about you, sis? Sister Stephanie and yeah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. All right, but we're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. Let's read it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached. So the Bible says if, we pre if another Jesus is being preached to you that the Bible has not preached, keep reading. Or if you receive another spirit. Or if you receive another spirit, keep reading which ye have not received, or another gospel, or another gospel, keep reading, which ye have not accepted, mm -hmm. ye might well bear with him. Now check this out. The Bible says that there is going to be false Christ arriving on earth, right? Now we got to know the true Christ, and if the things I said today are of him, you understand what I'm saying about that, brother? Yes. Are the things set up on earth about Christ? One thing we have to understand is, the political system today, is that in service of Christ? That's not in service of Christ. Because we gotta think to ourselves, a two-party system, you are Republican, I'm Democrat. What is, is that something, is that united? Give me, um, how's the Bible? We gotta think to ourselves. Do the, do, and Democrat and Republican. Uh, 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 we are in a country where we have two political parties. Does the Bible say that? We're supposed to do that? No. So we gotta ask ourselves, what does he want from us? What does God want from us? What does God want from us? To love him with our heart, mind, soul, and strength and our neighbors and himself. Very good. Excellent. Very true. Very true. What about you, sis? What does God want from us, Sister Stephanie? He wants us to love him, right? Now we gotta ask ourselves, in the Bible, does God explain the system we live in? Is it of God? We gotta ask ourselves, is the system we live in, is it of God? Because this country says, in God we trust. That's right. It says, in God we trust. Right. So now we gotta go into the Bible and says, is that true statements? Now one thing we gotta understand is if God is about this system. Let's read. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to de desolation. What does that, that scripture is heavy? Let us read that scripture one more time. Let's read that. Let's break it down slow one more time. And Jesus knew their thoughts right. and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. What does that mean? Yeah. It says any, read that one more time, any kingdom, one more time. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. What does that mean? Any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. What does that mean, brother? I'm going to read for you one more time, one more time. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself. Any kingdom divided against itself. Any kingdom that has two opposing parties inside of it, what's going to happen? It's brought to desolation. It's brought to destruction. Now we got to ask 
ourselves. Are we living in a system like that? Are we? Yeah. We're living in a system like that. Yeah. Where we have politics on the Democratic side and politics on the Republican side. So the Bible's letting you know you're trusting in a system that's gonna come to desolation. Right. That system is going to come to destruction. Right. Right. So what we gotta understand is, are we really truly living what the scripture's saying? Because if we were, we wouldn't be putting our trust in a system like this. One more time. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every kingdom, brother right there, are you a Democrat? Republican? What about you, brother? You Democrat, Republican? You're not in any party? Okay, brother. Any Democrats, Republicans? We gotta go with, let's go into that. Brother right there, are you a Democrat? Right there. Brother right there in the suit. Democrat over there? Democrat and Republican. What's up, brother? Do you guys believe that Jesus is God? What do you mean by that? But, but before we go into that, before we go into that, before we go into that, because we got to go over this topic real quick. Because we do believe Christ is the Messiah. Yeah. We believe Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying, brother? So that's what we believe. Because we believe in what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. You understand? So one thing we're going over, we got to address this first. It's understanding, are we living in a system that opposes God? Once we understand that, we can understand those deep things. We got to get those small things first before we can go to the deep. What's that I'm saying, brother? Yeah, well, the, the saying, you got to crawl before you can walk. Right. You feel me, brother? So what we going over? Let's read this one more time. And Jesus knew their thoughts and, and said it to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Right, brother? Brother right there, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Good evening, brother. Good evening. Um, what political party do you represent? Okay, you're independent. Okay. Now, I understand independent. They do hold, they, they say they hold power in this country, right? Okay. Yeah. So my question, as an independent, what can we look forward to so that we can get our people in a better situation? What would, if I'm going to take the time to listen to that, you have that fly, right? What, what can I get from that? You have to vote for your best interest, right? Okay. That's what, that's what, that's what. Okay, that's what you're gonna say. Now, what are those best interests that we should like? As far as that, what best interests does he have so we can understand? As far as family. family. As far as mental growth. Mental growth. Okay. As far as mental health. Mental health. Okay. That is what this brother has been fighting for, and he's actually been on the forefront of doing so. Brother has to rest. He's reaching one of the highest levels of office. Right. This brother has issues, and he's reaching high levels of office. And brother, what did we say? And we, we're Israelites here. What we teach is our people going to higher levels. Because the way that we're at right now is not good. We're trying to get to a better situation on this earth. You feel what I'm saying, brother? Because us as a nation of people, we haven't seen real growth since... <laughs> Since ever, right? I couldn't even pick up. I was trying to say something. We haven't realized any growth. You understand what I'm saying, brother? But what I have, what God gave us is his word. Mm. Yes. What God gave us is his word and the importance of it. You understand what I'm saying, brother? Let's go, let's go back to where we were in Lamentations 417. Let's go back to Lamentations. God, let me read. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Now the Bible says our eyes have failed for our vain help. Now brother, one thing I know about politics is sometimes when we have that brother that we're, we're happy for, we think he's going to make some changes. When he gets to a certain position, money starts to get involved. Money starts to get involved in the politics. That's every level. It's not just one level. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So what God is trying to show us is that what is the true help that we need? Let's read that one more time. Right, right, right. As for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Now, That's right. What do we got to ask ourselves? Are we really have the Bible talked about vain help? That means help in lies. Let's read that one more time. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Our eyes have failed for vain help. Now one thing that we have done as a nation of people, we put our energy 
into politics. We put our soul into politics because we're looking for real change. Right. Because the Israelites are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's, right. That's who the Israelites are. And we are looking for real change. You know? You know what? Remember what Bar Barack Obama said? Change you can believe in. That's the change we're looking for. Change you can believe in. That's what I'm talking about, right, brother? That's the change that we want. Let's read that one more time. It's brought to destruction, right? Sister? Come on, we talk, we talking. Any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So we gotta ask ourselves, are we living in a country that's divided, sister? Are we living in a divided country right now? Let's read that one more time. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So what do we gotta so what are we here doing as Israelites? What is the hope? that we gotta believe in. Who is the hope that we are supposed to believe in? That's the question. Who are we supposed to be believing in? The Father. The Father, right? And what does the Father give to us? The Word. And who is the Word? Christ. Exactly. You had a thought, you, Christ. Christ is the Word. The Word made flesh, right? Yeah, so we, we hope in Christ to get us back to the order that we need. Because if we keep depending on this country, we're gonna keep staying dead last. Mm. So hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew It's how odd 
For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's how I'm man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.